I've moved or deployed on average about every year of my life since then. So, mm. and when you move, do you have a, a an easy time making friends and like finding community where you go? The army is sort of like community. Just add alcohol. Call from Mark. Hi, Mark. Hey, how's it going? Going okay. How's it going with you? Uh, it could be better. Okay. How could it be better? Um, well, I, I had a rough day dealing with the uh, Veterans Administration medical folks, so that was irritating. Well, I'm glad you called because I know a lot about the Veterans Medical Association. A lot of old vets bitching and complaining. No, I was, I was, I was being a dick. But um, <laughs> what, what, uh, uh, what problem are you having with them? Oh, um. So I've been having um, issues with my knees since 2017, and I've been frustrated with the Army uh, when I was still in um, that they weren't taking it seriously. Um, and uh, weren't taking it seriously, and they didn't kind of give me the attention I wanted, and maybe I'm just kind of grasping for answers that aren't there. Um, I, I, I'm one of the very few people who in the Army actually like to run. And when my knees started to hurt and the treatments they uh, did on me, haven't had surgery yet, um, uh, uh, didn't work out. I slowly reduced my running, reduced my running, reduced my running. And that accompanied a little bit of weight gain and in general overall loss yeah. of fitness. And yeah. I, I felt, especially uh, being an officer, I wasn't, I wasn't giving, setting the best example for my guys. I was very fortunate that um, the Army suspended the PT test as long as they did because I don't know if I would have been able to make it. What do you, are you still in the, you, well, you said you're a veteran, so are you still, what are you doing I, now? I got out in August. Okay. What do you, what are you doing now? Are you retired? Yeah, sort of. I mean, uh, retirement in the military has a very specific connotation and I'm not retired, but, um, my compensation from the VA, uh, is almost equivalent. Okay. Um, so you have a you have uh, compensation from the the Veterans Association. I'm gonna assume that's what VA stands for. Administration. Oh, administration. Okay, I was close. I got the V, but not the A. An no association worries. and an, an association, by the way, and administration. I feel like are pretty similar. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, what what? So so you don't really so so how long how long are those checks gonna be coming in for? Um. Unless I get convicted of fraud, theoretically, for life. But again, Congress can do whatever they want. If the American people stop giving the love they have been since 9-11 to veterans and the electorate changes, that can change. But for the foreseeable future, I've got that money coming in. Okay. Um, well, that's good. What, so, all right, so what do you do with your time then if, you don't, uh, if you're not working? Um, that's a good question. I've, uh, been a little bit of a shut in. I do have something cooking. I'm trying, I'm applying to a Japanese language school in Japan. I want to get, oh. I've got a little bit of Japanese knowledge, but it's pretty pitiful. And I've been Sugoi. wanting to say hide. I see. I see. I don't know what that means. What does hide mean? Hi. It means uh, oh yeah. hi oh hi 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 yes yes hi 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 um that's cool man that's cool so you're you're, you're are you like um so are you are you applying to go do that in Japan yes um Exciting. we we had a little bit of a mix up with the school for an interview so I accidentally missed the first interview they've scheduled a second one so I was not happy. Uh, when I realized I'd gotten the wrong date, um, especially when I was very careful to confirm the time difference. And then I just completely missed that they shifted it, shifted the day when they sent me a Zoom link. Hmm. 
Um, so is this uh, this uh, Japanese language school thing? Is it is it part of? Uh, is it is it a veteran thing or is it just like a uh, you know a, a random kind of uh, unrelated Japanese school? It, the the latter. It's kind of a it's a for profit school. I wouldn't be able to pay for it with the VA, but I that's one of the things I do have going for me. I have no debt, and I have between retirement accounts and just uh, brokerage accounts, I have about a hundred thousand dollars in just straight like fairly liquid. Uh, assets again nice. you know the economy takes a dump it's going to be less but nice nice um and you're going to use that to to pay for this japanese school yeah mm. um now are you hoping to like uh like stay in japan at all i I don't think so. Especially when I was in the army, I got to go to Korea and Europe. But one of the things, like a every for the audience, when CNN is freaking out about North Korea, ignore it. <laughs> when the whole Trump business was going down, I was getting blackout drunk in the middle of Seoul. It nobody in South Korea cares. North Korea has been going on. Anyways, tangent. But I, I've always said um, I, I'd like to live overseas for a year or two. And yeah. I, I think, you know, the living in Japan thing is a dream. Um, and I visited there twice and they've got some problems. I don't think people realize I, I met Japanese Nazis both times I visited Tokyo. Japanese Nazis. It's more common than you would think. Huh. Were they like official? I, I, I mean, I guess I don't know how official a Nazi can be, but what uh, what so, made them Japanese Nazis? So the first time it was a far right um, march, like a fairly good number. Fortunately, most were middle middle aged or older, but carrying signs that essentially said "expel the foreigners," you know, uh, mm -hmm. "restore the emperor," um, and uh, you know, essentially remilitarize Japan. By foreigners, do they mean like like Americans coming over there? No, they mean literally everyone who isn't the purest of the pure Japanese. Oh, okay, okay. So it's um, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, so it's it's even people like the there's a large Korean um, minority within Japan that has been historically treated. Very, very, very poorly. And mm -hmm. I remember hanging out with um, at a Japanese bar and just hearing a Japanese local say some incredibly offensive things about Koreans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And this, and this, uh, when, how long were you in Japan for when you were? Was so the this? first time I went, so the first time I went for about two weeks. And the second time I was, it was super cool. I landed the day they opened up to individual tourists. So I got interviewed on Japanese TV, which was kind of neat. And I spent about a month and a half sweet. just bebopping around Japan. I actually met an atomic bomb survivor in Nagasaki. That was wild. Oh, that is wild. Was he like a... When, when did the Nagasaki bomb drop? That was August of 1945. Wow. How old was, was this guy? Dude was 96, so he's a teenager. Wow. I, I can't remember if he worked in the Mitsubishi factory, but he handed me a little card with his story. Essentially, his boss was like, hey, we need you to walk to Site B. Walked over to Site B, was walking right behind a pillar, and the bomb went off, and he was like one of two people from either site to survive. Wow. Um, okay, so you're there for two weeks, and you're thinking back. And so if you went back for this language school, how long would you mm -hmm. go for? Um, so the maximum I could get the visa is about one year and nine months, but I figure um, at least a year. And again, living in work or living in Japan, and I have the option to have a part time job. I really want to be able to really increase my command of uh, Japanese. Um, and if I get to a certain point where I'm like, hey. 
I can watch my anime without subtitles and read my manga untranslated. Like, that's gravy. So, um, I'm also kind of curious. What's your, like, family friend situation right now? Would you be going to, like, if you went to Japan, would you be abandoning, you know, anyone here? Would you still be able to have, like, a, a, a support system going on? Would you have people there? What's the deal? Um, so I'm single. I don't really have any brothers or sisters in the local area I currently am. I don't really have any friends. Um, my best friend, uh, lives in a different time zone already, although Japan will complicate that a uh, fair deal. And, um, no real attachments. Um, it's, it's been frustrating since I left the house at 22. I've moved on average about moved or deployed on average about every year of my life since then. So mm. relationships and uh, friends have been difficult. Um, is that like a big struggle in your life? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still talk to my best friend um, who I've been friends with since middle school. But again, like he's got a wife, he's got a kid on the way, you know, life's taken out elsewhere. He works remote, so he's he and I can talk on Discord while he plays RuneScape while he's quote unquote working. So you've been uh, like moving every year since you were twenty two. Yeah. Is it okay if I ask how old you are now? Uh, I'm thirty. Okay. Yeah. Do you? Hmm. And when you move, do you have a, a an easy time making friends and like finding community where you go? Um, I mean, the the army is sort of like community, just add alcohol. Um, but it's one of those things. As soon as you move away, you might, and especially as an officer, um, it, it's a little. It, especially when I got to be a captain, it became very cutthroat. Um. And I, by about four years in, I was like, I don't think I'm going to make this a career. So I did something. There's a game and you must play it. So like going to the, uh, the senior officer's house and being like, oh, beautiful house sir, like lovely reception. Um, but the whole thing of like, why do we need to delay this guy's orders? I'm like, he needs to get his family in order. And it's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. It's okay. like, yeah, all right, sir. Don't care. Well, I think I think moving to Japan would be exciting. Uh, well, I guess you weren't even talking about moving. You were just talking about going there for a year and nine months. Um, yeah, I think I think it'd be cool, and it's something I actually want to do. Like a, another benefit I have is a full GI Bill, so that's three years of school within the United States or even outside, and. Like I told everybody on my way out, my plan is to get an MBA and do this and do this. And I'll be at a Fortune 500 company, you know, and put that all on paper. And when it's just like, please let me go. Hmm. Do you what's it, Do you have an ultimate dream or goal of, any, of some kind? I mean, yeah, be a billionaire and have a, uh, um, a super villain style uh, uh, lair laid into a mountain in an abandoned salt mine that has apocalypse proof uh, storage and all that stuff. Ambitious. Yeah. I like that. Hmm. Um. Hmm. I don't know. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about you right now. Cause, uh, it's cool that you've, 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 you've been able to withstand like moving, uh, every year of your life, and it sounds as though you know it's been difficult, but that you've found uh, good stuff every time you do it. It's inspiring to me. It's it's one of those things where um, it's been tough, but there's like some folks um, that like I met somebody in Ohio who the furthest they'd ever been away from home was 60 miles, like over the border to Indiana. And I was just like, I've been literally all over the world and I'm not saying you need to do that. But if you hate your podunk town, 
maybe it's time to firebomb your apartment and just drive. I feel like you would get in trouble if you firebombed your apartment. Yeah, probably would. But it's a nice fantasy. What is your name again? Uh, Mark. And uh, how should I address you, uh, Mr. Forever, Lyle, Mr. Gecko? You can call me whatever you want, man. Thanks right. for talking to me about all this stuff. This is all fascinating. It makes me think about... I don't know. That's what I really like about doing this uh, show is I feel like I get to learn about uh, so many people's lives and how they deal with whatever the fuck is going on with them. And, uh, you know, I appreciate you talking about all this. Oh, yeah, no worries. I appreciate you picking up the phone. Is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Um, uh, don't trade options, kids, on uh, your uh, day trading app. And the best thing you can do, recommended by Warren Buffett, is a low-cost uh, S&P 500 index fund. Have a good day. Words to live by. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Bye. Hi. Hi. Hi, who is this? My name's Rain. What's going on, Rain? How you doing? You know, I'm I'm all right. I just um <laughs> found out that I didn't get a job that I really wanted. So I'm a little bummed. What was the job? A dog trainer. A dog trainer. Yeah. I'm sorry um what were you trying to train the dogs to do? <laughs> all kinds of things, but um you know, most basic obedience and stuff like that. Okay. Um, is it uh, is it wrong to train dogs? Like, should we just let them misbehave because that's you know, in their nature? You know, it's actually not. So dogs love to work. Mm. Yeah, so mm. dogs love to work. Um, and so if you give them, like, purpose, it kind of helps them to to grow more personality and kind of share more of a bond with their owners. So it actually helps a lot. I feel like, uh, 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 by the way, I, 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 you know, appreciate, it sounds as though what you're saying comes from like an educated place, but <laughs> anecdotally, anecdotally, I have a dog. Mm. That's my parents' dog. It's not my dog. But, uh, and that dog does not like to work. That dog likes to sit and do absolutely <laughs> nothing as much as she possibly can. Um, oh. would she, would she be happier if she worked? Pro- uh, probably. Probably. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, um, spend lots of time sitting around doing absolutely nothing and I'd probably be happier if I spent it, uh, going on walks or trying to, uh, you know, build they, a church or whatever. Yeah. That's what they say is like doing things like walking and stuff helps with like your mental health and stuff. But I, mm-hmm. I, I don't personally do it myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. I myself is just a little bit lazy, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so you did, why are you, so you're upset that you didn't get this job. How many different, um, dog, it sounds like dogs are like your thing. How many different dog jobs did you apply for? I've applied for quite a few. So I currently work at, um, a big chain store as a trainer, but, um, it's kind of the worst job I've ever, ever experienced. Not the, the job that I do. I love training and I love teaching people and helping them with their dogs, but, um, I definitely uh, have applied for many, many positions for training at like, like big, like board and train places that are um, a little bit more professional than I would say a PetSmart is. Okay. In what way is, not to put PetSmart on blast, but in what way are they unprofessional? <sighs> managers. The managers. Oh, okay. they're, they're not very... They like to, to pick on everyone, and they kind of are just not very good people. And I've been a manager before, so, like, like I was a retail manager beforehand, and um, I've done all kinds of things, honestly. I was a stripper at one point. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, so I have definitely met better managers in my days, and these managers are just they're almost evil, I would say. Evil, you say? Well, Honestly, I'll... feel like it. Well, okay, well, how do you feel like they're evil? Well, my one boss, he just seems to to find 
every little thing and point it out, but in the worst way possible. So she'll make you feel like you are worthless when she's yeah. done talking to you. And it's just not, you know, I was a manager before and the way you handle talking to people is not making them feel like they're the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Sounds so like, did, you, did I, I just hear a dog bark? <laughs> yeah, I've got four of them. That sounds. That sounds. If you if you told me you had four dogs, I'd hire you for any kind of dog <laughs> training thing. I feel like that's objective evidence that you know how to take care of dogs. Um, okay. Why do you? You know. You know. You know. Why do you? Why do you think this um, person fucking is so evil to you? Honestly, I think she's unhappy. Yeah. I think she's overall unhappy in her daily life, uh -huh. and thinks that it's something that she just doesn't know how to help herself with and I think that the way she handles it is just by pin picking people who she just doesn't like and I'm very I will say I'm very I stand up for myself so I will never work in a place where I think that um you know I I, I that I can't stand up and say hey that's not right so uh -huh. I'm very open and I'll tell her things like hey this isn't okay and because I do that, and because I bring up, like, issues that she's not handling because she just wants to let it ride, you know, and just kind of ignore it, um, because I bring up the issues that she kind of dusts under the rug, I don't think she is very happy about that. And so she takes a lot of shots at me. I got a recent uh, okay. write-up for being unorganized. You got a write-up for being unorganized. All right, so she's unhappy. So she starts, you know, taking it out on other folks. Uh, and you're, then that makes you unhappy. So you're like, oh, I'm not going to put up with this shit. So you tell her that she's doing, so, she's fucking up. And that just pisses her off. So yeah. she starts to do more things that you uh, are not fond of. Exactly. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Are you still at this job? I am, yeah. I, I love the people I teach and the, the classes that I do. So like I go in and I, I really try to focus on, on the pet parents and the dogs who come in to see me and specifically me, um, which is why it's so hard to leave because I still have classes that are going on right now, you know? So it's like mm -hmm. one of those things where it's really difficult to just pick up and leave all your, your people who you're kind of teaching and helping, you know, mm -hmm. these people have mm -hmm. dogs who are aggressive or, you know, jumpers or just overall like anxiety and stuff. And one of my big things is to help teach dogs who came from like the shelter, you know, who have a rough life and who have all those behavioral issues. That's my big passion is to help those guys. And so it's really hard for me to just walk out of this job because, you know, I have those, those connections to those people. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh... What's your name again? Rain, just like the rain. Rain, rain. Look, I look. If I could tell you this, um, uh, it sounds as though you. Um, I mean, clearly, you have a passion for dogs. Um, mm. And look, I feel like even if you didn't get this one job, I think uh, that passion for dogs will lend you into something. I mean, there's at least look. There is at least. 10,000 dogs. <laughs> so there's probably at least... How many dog... How many... Do, work with me here. How many dog jobs do you think there are per amount of dogs that exist in Ooh. the world? There's got to be a good amount compared to the dogs, I feel. Okay. But around the world, I feel like it's mm -hmm. hard to some pop impoverished places or places like Korea or um, places where they sell dog meat and stuff like that. Like it's yeah. really hard. So I feel and, like I, and, and, and I assume and I assume when you say that you want a a, do a, a, a job with dogs, selling dog meat is not Yeah. Hard pass one on of those. that. Okay. All right. So not in right, so we're not including those dog jobs. No, definitely. Technically those are technically those are dog jobs. They're not the ideal ones. You're right. But, under, but the undeniably, they are, they, are dog, they are jobs working with dogs. Anyway. <laughs> Very true. I would think um, there's a good amount compared to the amount of dogs that there are. 
Mm-hmm. You know, there's mm-hmm. vets, there's trainers, um, there's dog sitters, there's groomers. So I mean, listen. I'm sure you'll. I am. I am. Uh, uh, I guess just from talking to you, I, I'm pretty confident you'll be able to find uh, a a job that involves dogs that doesn't involve, um, you know, killing them and selling them. <laughs> that, yeah, and, and, and involves the opposite. In fact, involves the opposite. Involves the opposite. taking care of them so that they do not die. Yeah. Um, That's my goal. So I, th- rest I, 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 so I think you'll be okay. But I don't know. Thank you. I, I needed have, to I hear no... that. Okay, good. Good. My boyfriend's um, really good at supporting me too, and he's he's kind of came and helped me when I got home and was feeling down. That's nice. What is, does he also does he does he also do dog stuff? No, he's a, a district manager. Okay, cool. Well, listen, Rain. Is there anything uh, else that you would like to say to the people at the computer before we go? Honestly, thank you so much for answering. This is I've called thousands of times i must have the last time you were on stream i called at least 400 times so thank you for answering um (laughs) uh, adopt and you know love dogs love all animals and give them a shot and uh go to your local shelter and uh see if you can help someone out and don't forget about the senior dogs they need love too thank you for calling rain thank you oh sorry I you know I hate the um I don't like the tiny I don't like tiny dogs I don't like the little ones I don't those are those even dogs at that point like I don't like the I hate to be um biased against you know I hate the little ones with the with the crap in their eyes with like the little white ones I mean they can exist but I don't I don't like them I don't like them so much, I wouldn't even eat one. All right, let's move on. Call from... Mouth. Hello? (laughs) Hey, Lyle. What's up? How you doing, man? What's going on? Nothing much. I'm just sitting on the couch watching my wife play Animal Crossing. Dude, you sound like you just did a whip it right now. (laughs) I did not. I promise. Have we ever talked before? One time, long, long ago, and you were getting raided, and I was telling you the story about one of my shitty neighbors, um, and you were very tired. Oh, well, I'm not tired right now. I'm full of energy and ready to accept whatever it is you have you have called in to tell me. Nice. I, uh... I you don't have anything to tell me, do you? No, I do. I do. Okay, I have a pretty maybe. stressful Sorry. job. Oh, yeah? My wife's pregnant. I have a 21-month-old baby. And I don't get a lot of time to fuck around and do stupid stuff like I used to. What kind of stupid stuff did you used to do? I go out in the middle of the woods, go out in the middle of nowhere for like... 10 hours or so, just wake up super early, get really far out there, and just have nothing around or... Things like that. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. You have a wife and children, and mm-hmm. unfortunately your wife and children have impeded your ability to go out deep into the woods alone for 10 hours and fall asleep with nothing. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's okay. It's good. But I found something new. Did, you, really bring a, did you bring a sleeping bag or was it just, just you? I would have a firearm and a GPS tool and a backpack with some goodies. If I wouldn't sleep, I'd just go walk around. Hmm. I mean, have you ever, do you know what camping is? I do know what camping is, yes. Okay. Some people take their families camping, which is yeah, a yeah. version of what you did. I could do that, but I'd try to take a pregnant person camping would seem like they wouldn't enjoy it much they're in constant discomfort uh okay so you have a 21 how old are you i'm 33 nice okay you're like a you're you seem you seem like a healthy normal adult man you kind of seem like (laughs) the guy that would pop up if i googled man and went to google images (laughs) 
Uh, I, maybe. I guess it depends. Do you consider but yourself a healthy this... adult man? Mm. Well, I, I guess so. Okay. I'm pretty, my job is stressful and I just, I, I don't sleep much. And that's, I guess that's all normal stuff though. So yeah. Well, uh, what do you do for work? I am a veterinarian. You're a veterinarian. Yeah. So you're, dude, you're, th- yeah, you know, I wouldn't sleep too if my job was to kill dogs all day. <laughs> That's your job, right? It's to kill dogs all day. That is a part of it. Tell me honestly, how many, okay, because I know the, the whole idea of a veteran is if you're, is <clears throat> you're supposed to save dogs, right? True. Uh, on a daily basis, how many dogs do you kill and how many dogs do you save? I guess kill would be zero to four. Okay. Save. I, I, uh, define, I guess define save, like uh, something's dying and then stop it from dying. Yes. I did that today. That was fun. Okay. Did you kill any dogs today? I did. How many dogs did you kill? One. So you really didn't do anything today? Zero. Net zero. Does it work like that in your brain? Like, at the end of a day, do... For every dog you save, does that negate a dog that you kill? Or are those, like, two just separate things in your brain? Oh... You gotta put points up on the scoreboard. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I I don't even see it as killing something. It's like a, this thing is suffering so immensely. It's like a mercy. That's hardcore. You know what? That's what Thanos thought too when he was snapping people away. Oh my god! I explained the the plot line of Thanos to my dad one time, and and he said, "Oh, that makes sense." <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's the thing. I feel like that's how half the people who see that movie come out. They kind of yeah, get like, it. Uh, yeah, that, that, that would work. I'm not going to say I don't get what Thanos was going for. I don't think it was a good... I don't think in practice it was a good idea, but, you know, I get what he was going for. The theory is good. It's sound. Um. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, dude, you kill dogs for a living. You're going to be stressed out and not sleep. But my wife on Easter bought our baby this bubble set and it makes these fucking gigantic bubbles and it has inspired something in me and now if I'm not making bubbles I'm spending at least two hours a day thinking about making bubbles what do you like so much about the bubbles the (laughs) the bubbles uh, they're huge, first off. And then when you're making them with, like, this two sticks and a string, you get a look inside of them, and they're, like, amorphous, and they got this... kind of They're kind of alive when they're that size, and they wobble around, and they get really long, and they snap into these little... Not little, but gigantic circles, and they're just kind of floating around. And it is... It is so fun to see. Mm. It's, like, relaxing. Mm. You've You've regressed... Into a childlike state of wonder. <laughs> Dude, I researched making my own bubble solutions to make bigger bubbles that last longer. That's awesome. What, what did you find? Glycerin. It's like a plant-based hand moisturizing thing. I bought like a gallon of it on Amazon. I mix it with normal bubble solution. You can put cornstarch in there. You let it sit overnight. And then you, I have a park next to my house, and there's a big grass field with a hill next to it. And I stand on top of that hill, and I just launch these gigantic bubbles out into the ether. That's kind of awesome. It sounds, you sound like you have a good life. Yeah, I do, I think, yeah. You kill dogs and have a baby and <laughs> blow bubbles. That sounds chill. <laughs> It sounds like you, again, you seem like a normal, healthy adult male. Thanks, and me, at least in my eyes, man. At least in my eyes. I don't, I'm not hearing anything dire from you. And I'm not saying that to minimize the issues. I'm saying that yeah, no. to hopefully make you see the same thing. 
Yeah, hundred percent. I want to take my bubble wand and everything, and I want to sit outside of a music festival and just make these gigantic bubbles for people who are tripping, and just watch the enjoyment on their face. And that's my dream right now. That sounds awesome, man. I like that. You ever take it to a music festival? No, before? I just got into it on Easter. Idea? Just on Easter, nice. I got it. Yeah. Right, I ragged like on a... my wife too. You what on your wife? I was making fun of her because I was like, "Oh, Jesus! Did he? He was born today. Came alive. She's like born Catholic, but she's like not really religious." So she tries to do these religious holidays for our kid, and I, I make fun of it. And then I spent the entire goddamn day playing with her Easter bubble. That's awesome, man. Do you do you blow? Uh, I know you have like a little baby. Do you ever blow bubbles at him? Oh yeah, she she like uh, will grab the sticks out of my hands, and she'll make bubbles too, and that's a lot of fun to see. Oh, that's great, man. That's cool. Um. What do you call your new? You get that's the cool thing about inventing stuff. You get to name it. What have you called your new bubble solution? Oh my god! I haven't. I call it bubble juice, actually bubble juice, but that's not. That's more of just a descriptor, if anything. Dude, what if you injected that shit into a dog and it saved the dog? Oh, I I, I highly doubt that. Dude, what if you injected it into a dog and it make it would like make dogs float? Like Willy Wonka and the juice and the Yeah, uh, like Willy Wonka and the juice. juice. Yeah. 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 And then I scream at the dog for stealing it from me. Yeah. Man, look, I I know that you miss going on ten hour walks in the woods. But <laughs> I, just from an outsider looking in, I think your life has improved since then. You're probably right. You know, they don't tell you about having a kid. Tell me. This constant guilt that I feel like I could be doing so much more. Sounds like you're doing a lot, man. What do you think more you could be doing? I'm not sure. I don't know. I work four days a week. I hang out with her one day a week and on the weekends. My parents take care of her else the rest of the time. My wife is working. I feel like there's always stuff more to do. I don't know. Well, like, like what? Like, because you know, look, man, if you can't think of anything, don't don't drive yourself crazy over it. What what else do you want to do? Like, if I have to. If I have to do something on our weekday hangout day, and I have to take her to my parents' house, I, that's time that I should be spending with her, but I'm busy doing something else. Or if I want to do something fun, and my wife watches her for a bit, and I go do something, or my parents watch her for a bit, I feel like, uh, you know, there's always like a PC that's like, ah, oh, you suck. Oh, uh, is this, you want to do more for yourself? No, no, no. More for the baby. More for the baby. Yeah. Um, well, here's the thing. I think you have uh, a a long... Well, I mean, this baby's only 21 months old. Isn't it exciting? You won't be able to say... You, you can just start using years soon. You don't have to do the months thing. That's I true. never understood the months thing. Anyway, you have this baby's only fucking two. All right, you got, yep. you got, uh, t- several several more years to make <laughs> contribution, and then the other one ain't even born yet. So That's true. you haven't even you haven't even had like you're beating yourself up. Hold on, I have to sneeze. Achoo! Fuck. <laughs> You're beating yourself <laughs> up. Like my wife. <laughs> You're beating yourself up over shit well, that you even haven't that. even had the opportunity to do yet. You're beating yourself up for not contributing enough to the life of a baby that has not even been born yet. Yeah, Give yourself no, a no break. Consciousness. You know, it's not even beating myself up. It's just like a little nag, like like a like a like a little ringing, and you think about it sometimes. 
and then he blows bubbles and everything floats away. Some people, um, I don't know if this has happened in your office. Some people, they have a baby and then they just abandon it on the door of a vet's office. And oh my God. have the vet take in the baby. Some people just abandon their children in dumpsters and never speak to them again. I want you to make that. I want you go ahead and make that your new, make that your baseline, right? I haven't abandoned her. You have not abandoned, you did not throw your baby in the garbage. Oh God. That's your baseline. Dude. Right there. There's something else that happens when you have a baby? Tell me. I don't know if this is for everybody. Your OCD comes out. Like, I have this OCD. I used to have it when I was a kid where I would knock on wood constantly. If I had, I had like, intrusive thoughts, knock on wood, knock yeah. on wood, oh, knock yeah, on wood. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Fucking Christ, dude. The first two months she was born, I feel like I had blisters on my knuckles just from knocking on wood, knocking on wood, intrusive thoughts. There's a knife on the counter. What if it tumbles off the counter? Impales her. Knock on oh, wood. Oh, yeah. What if this happens? You drop her. Permanent, you know, just... <laughs> Them. Oh yeah! It's like oh my oh, god! Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I know, it's right? Because it's like when you're when you're just when you're just a guy. It's like all you got to worry about is yourself and any and like all the bad things that could possibly happen to you. And then you fall in love, you get you. married, you're like, all right, now oh. there's me and all the bad things that could possibly happen to my wife. Oh. And then you have two oh. kids, and it's like, oh man, here's all the bad things that could happen to two of my kids and my wife and me. I mean, it's crazy. I feel like everything I just said is making yourself, it worse, but I, I understand what you're talking about fully. When you're by yourself, it doesn't matter. You're like, if I stumble upon a cougar out in these woods, I'm just going to deal with it, and whatever happens, happens. And now it's like, I don't want to go there. <laughs> well, I think you're a great dad. You're making fucking bubble solution for your children, man. Give yourself a break, okay? Right. You're a good guy. You're a good dad. You didn't abandon your children. You care mm-hmm. about whether or not they're impaled by knives. Oh. You're doing good, man. Thanks, dude. You're doing good, too. Oh, I saw yeah. you in San Diego. That was pretty fun. Oh, you did? Yeah, it was good. Well, yeah. Did did we meet? Did you did you do the meet and greet line thing? I I did, and do the meet and greet line. I had to skedaddle afterwards. Damn, well, I'm glad I got to finally talk to you. Yeah, it was a fun show. It was cool. I had a good time. That club is is awesome. Shout out, Mike Drop Comedy. Do you feel? I've been meaning to ask you this too. Do you feel that the people who are willing to step on stage versus the people who are willing to call in anonymously? are vastly different human beings. I have gotten what I believe I have gotten very lucky in doing these live shows that the people who come on stage they like like almost every time the people who come on stage they're not just like you know whatever looking for attention or mm. um sh- or being like oh I'm on the show hey this is it they're like be like everyone's being themselves. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what I. Yeah. That's why. That's why I love about the folks who come out to the shows and just the general vibe I get from the people who listen to me is like very genuine people. Like they're not performing, you know. <laughs> they're just like being. They're they're really being themselves out there, which is a hard thing to fucking do in a situation like oh, that. Oh yeah, I can. I'm, ama- I'm amazed at every show that people are, you know, uh, being being so genuine like that. It's really cool. Yeah. So, I don't know if that yeah. answers your question, but it does. They they really open up. Ah, what is your name again? Mouse. That's my that's my fake name. <laughs> Mouse. Yeah, it, my cat. He died. My name name is Mousetrap. Oh, uh, well, Mouse. It was good talking to you, man. Uh, I hope Thanks, you. Uh, I, w- one of these days, I hope you realize that you're a good dad. You've been putting in a lot of work, and I hope you reward yourself with one of your weird ten hour walks with a gun. <sighs> Yeah, that would be good. Maybe. That'd be fun. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Mm, no, I'm satisfied. I'm happy. Have fun, everybody out there. Be safe. Hey, you take care, Mouse. Thank you, man. Later, buddy. 
Lyle. Hi, who is this? <laughs> this is Gwen. What's up, Gwen? Oh, fine. Wow, this is really the first time I've tried to call in. That's crazy. Um, Gwen, what, really quick, Gwen, what year were you born? 2003. <laughs> How old does that make you? 20. 20 years old. Okay, what's going on, Gwen? Okay. I, beginning of last year, started to have a conniption where I started to, for the first time, start randomly having moments where I feel like I'm not on the right path. And it's fucking me up. Okay, last year you had a conniption, like you had a medical, is, is a conniption a medical term? You had a, you had like a, your brain went weird. That's what a conniption yeah. is, right? I, I'm not using it medically, but okay. yes. Um, okay, so your brain went weird and, um, you feel like you're not on the right path? Correct. Oh, what, uh, tell me, what path are you on? Okay. I'm taking the, the typical route. I'm going to college and then I'm getting a job. Okay. And, like, I'm studying journalism currently and it's, I always have wanted to be a journalist, but now that I'm here, I'm a I'm a sophomore. Okay. When I was a freshman, I was so passionate about it. Uh huh. And beginning of last semester, I think I started to uh, like more cha more obstacles were added. Like I wasn't just doing school. Like I like I had an actual job. I had a new relationship. And I'm like trying to balance all of those with also being social. And I think that is what made me start questioning everything that I was doing in a way. That inspired the – you just trying to live a balanced life inspired a conniption. It did. But because before I wasn't balancing so many things and then it was just like – it was just chaos. Yeah. I'm doing much this semester but unpacking last semester – it's troublesome. Well, life's a fucking. I mean, it's crazy how many things you're apparent. I don't. I don't know how to be a normal human being. Um, because I don't like my apartment has fucking dust bunnies on it and shit. But like the the checklist of a normal of of what the societal normal human being is, right? What whatever, educated with a job and a relationship and you know laundry done and friends and you know reads the news whatever it is like, like completing everything on the uh, 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 supposed societal totem whatever the fuck is hard you know doing every, balancing all these things you're talking about is, is difficult it is um all right so but you said you were having trouble with it last year and you're not having trouble with it this year what tell me about the present. Yeah. So currently I feel like I, I need to have some kind of like, uh, I need to start doing internships and stuff. Okay. For my major. In order to have like a job after college, I need internships. But in order to get internships, they want me to have previous experience. And I feel like it's just this never ending cycle of like, like, fuck. <laughs> What, um, like, what, what tell me, what do you, what is like, do you have an ultimate goal uh, for like, what do you want? You, okay, you said you were into journalism. Are you still into journalism? Yeah. I am still into journalism. I got a little radio show. I write for like the school newspaper and it's mm -hmm. lit and I enjoy it, but I definitely don't write for the newspaper as often because it's such a, um, it feels like such a task. But I mean, writing isn't all journalism. Is. Okay. So, do you um, what is what do you ultimately like? Want to do you have like a career in mind that you would like to pursue, or like a dream? Yeah, I think I I definitely want to do something involving like media, like media and analysis or or analyst and um, working with social media of people's companies. Like, I think that's what I want to do. A media, what is a media analyst? What does a media analyst do? They like analyze 
how how companies are properly using their social media to、okay. be able to you know support business. I thought I for a two for a second I thought you were going to say they analyze media and I was going to go you know what that makes a lot of sense.、Um, I, I I don't I I try not to give advice because but this I feel like I have I feel like I have good advice for this lane so I will、okay. advise I will advise. Okay.、Um, I actually I'm gonna I'm about to make your life.、Um, Worse, because I'm going to tell you to do things, and and you, the whole crux of this call was that you were doing too many things. So,、um, this is not going to help, or maybe it will. Anyway,、um, well, actually, let's start here. Are you um, are you going into debt to go to school? I am not going into debt to go to school, which I am so grateful for. Okay, wonderful. Um, all right. Okay, cool. So. That's good.、Um, here's my thing: is inter- you know, internships are great. I worked a lot of internships、um, in the in the film and media arts universe.、Um, but if you want to be a social media analyst and like help companies run their social media, why don't you like just start a business doing? Like you can you can start doing like you know you can, I mean you can just start doing that right now. You could start a business doing that right now. When I was in fucking college, I worked for a kid. I was twenty,、uh, and I worked for a kid who was old, just a、uh, one year older than me. Um, and he had a whole fuck. He was twenty. He was like not even that much. He was he was like pretty your age, and he was did this company, um, where he was like. Consulting uh, uh, businesses on marketing and social media and stuff, and you know, he 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 didn't know any more than than you do. He just di- he just did the thing, you know. He just put himself out there. He had the courage to do that.、Um, right. So, like, what I'm saying to you is, if you really wanted to, you could start that business right now. Like, you don't have to wait for permission for somebody to give you that. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know if that idea has crept into your head, or if it's a helpful idea for you. No, this is good. Hmm. Um. Because, like, having a social media marketing business is again something you could do right now. You can. Um. Well, first of all, you go on.、Uh, are you a bit? Are you a TikTok person? You big TikToker? I like not huge, but I enjoy TikTok. Okay, because you could go on TikTok right now and just start making, you know, I mean, I, I, I find an interesting way to do it because there's a lot of people that do this stuff, but you know, talk about、uh, trends or just use your expertise to、um, make videos, and then go to every dentist's office in your local municipality. And be like, hey, you want me to be your social media manager for so you can get more teeth money? I mean, you can just do that right now. You don't have to wait for、uh, you know anyone to give you permission to do that. Right. It's gonna make the problems that here's the, I'm gonna tell you. If you take that route, which I think you should. Um. Okay, like build a brand for myself. Like build、uh, yeah. a name for. It's、right. gonna make the problems that we were talking about earlier about a、uh, about a hundred thousand times、uh, worse.、Um, okay. And and actually, now I'm thinking about it, 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 I'm thinking about it. because it will make the problems you were just talking about a hundred thousand times worse. It might not be the best lifestyle fit for you to like run your own business, and that's okay if it's not. You might you might just as a human being be happier. Working for somebody else's thing, but you should know. But you should try it all. You should try both of those, so that you can figure out which situation would make you happier. Right. Does that make? What do you think about what I'm saying to you? I like what you're saying. I feel like you're. I'm because I'm also thinking about how. I like the idea. Like, it's not. I want. Like, I think I'm finally starting to manage having this balanced life, like for the first time. Sure. So、yeah. I'm not opposed to throwing new things in the mix. 
All right, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Um. You 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 could be a mar- dude. You know, look. You do, sooner or later, you're gonna be up there with fucking Gary V and Tony Robbins, yelling at people about how they're not making enough YouTube shorts, and those pe- those people will um, you know, they'll give you money. Yeah. There's also the worry in being a shitty journalist. But I know I'm not going to be a shitty journalist, but I feel What like do you mean a shitty What do you mean a shitty journalist? Like um people who have like, like bad for like I don't know, creating maybe fake news or like What do you what do you What do you what do you ta- what are you talking? Where's that coming from? I don't know. Because here's another thing. If you wanted to write, like, you could start a, you know, blo- well, I guess now there's, like, Medium or, um, I'm just saying everything I just want you to know because in, like, the the arts stuff, and I've talked to people about this on the podcast a bunch, um, like, if you want to be a journalist or a social media person, like, and, and I understand the there's a lot of value in getting internships and you should because, you know, it's – but these are all things you could just you could just do. You don't have to ask somebody for permission to write something. You can just go and write it and post it on Medium or talk about it on TikTok, and all of a sudden you're a journalist. There's there's motherfuckers with these YouTube channels where they like like I watched an hour long YouTube video about the fucking Nickelodeon Hotel the other day. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking okay. about? The guy who makes that? That guy no. that guy didn't that guy just that guy's a journalist. He did a fucking investigative report about the Nickelodeon Hotel. He didn't go to CNN and say, "Hey, can I write about the Nickelodeon Hotel?" cuz if he did, they would have said no. So he just did the report. And he made it. Now he's a journalist. He's asking on for permission, you know? And you I just want you to know that you can do that if you want to. Right. I got to take my own path. Yes. Per se. But I, but I also want you. I also we should be aware of the fact, just because you know you wanted to talk about balance, that the guy who made that uh, one-hour YouTube video about the Nickelodeon Hotel <laughs> almost certainly destroyed his life in the process. He almost certainly several times um, neglected his wife and children right. to um, you know because he he was getting emails. From somebody who had found um, uh, lost decals of Tommy Pickles that was mm. useful information to him, and he missed plenty of um, important life events because of it. But he did it, and he didn't ask anyone for permission to make his Nickelodeon Hotel video, even though it almost certainly destroyed his life. So, just I just want you to know that so you could do that. Yeah, you I'm can take- fuck up your balance to achieve your dreams. Right. Right. Was this conversation helpful to you at all? While it was helpful to me. Good. I need to stop looking at you as we're talking because it's stressing me out. Um, uh, Gwen, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Just have a great evening and hope everyone is feeling good and doing well. Have a good night, Gwen. Thank you. Thank you. That I was tr- I was trying to make a point when I was t- talked about he got an email about f- lost decals on a it felt clunky though but you guys understood the what I was trying to say sometimes I'm clunky sometimes I suck I don't know why I'm being hard on myself I hope Gwen does a thing I don't um I don't know I get heated at this I'm sure I've, I've talked about this on the fucking podcast a thousand times but I get heated when, about those kind of things because I don't want Gwen thinking that you know. She has to fucking, um, you know, uh, beg and plead some newspaper thing to be a journalist when she can just, you know, write about whatever she wants and talk about it on YouTube or Medium. Um, I went to the Nickelodeon Hotel. It was awesome. It was great. Uh, I don't have anything else to add to that. But go watch this guy. Go search. I think his name his name is Defunct Land. Actually, yeah. Go go look up Defunct Land. He makes great YouTube videos. Um, at the expense of um, I'm sure, 
I don't know. I mean, fuck it. He probably goes to the gym and does laundry and stuff. But I don't know. I don't know. Every weekend goes on.